So now in this video we're going to look at a circuit that I put together that we have an output here that turns off. The output goes low when the supply voltage goes low enough. So we're powering it with 10 volts right now. We could go up to 12 volts because we're using a 1000 ohm resistor to protect an LED. That is our uh, most uh, voltage sensitive uh, part of the circuit. We are turning the voltage down and somewhere about uh, 9.1 volts. That's where I have the trim pot, so we're at nine. We're still got a high output. There we go, dropped uh, a little bit below nine and the LED turned off. So we could adjust it with the uh, trim pot. But uh, we have a feedback resistor, positive feedback right there. So it's helping to hold it off. So now we gotta raise the voltage above that point that we were at to uh, get it back on. And there we go, 9.6 volts now. To get it to turn back off so we can adjust the sensitivity with that and you can see it's helping to hold the LED on now so I got to put the voltage to a lower point so now before we look at the circuit in more detail we're gonna adjust it so that the LED the output goes low LED turns off when we hit uh, 10 volts so we have it on high right now we just have to turn the trim pod until right when the LED turns off there we go because we set it at 10. So again, we have that hysteresis, that's gonna help hold it off until it's on. So we go up in voltage, there we go, about the 10.8 before it turned back on. And uh, I'm surprised it went off right there. So we go down, probably because I bumped the power supply. So if I bump the power supply, it cuts power for a little bit, you get that uh, low uh, signal. So there we go, we got that 10 volts and it turned off. This circuit is really sensitive to if you bump the power supply, cut power because of that hysteresis. So this capacitor here should help. Let's get uh, high enough where it turns on and we put it to the power supply. It should provide power uh, briefly and uh, good power is still on. So that uh, if we bump the power supply, it keeps powering the uh, load so that it doesn't get that lower supply voltage and cut off instantly. So now we're going to take a closer look at the circuit, starting with the schematic. So I'm using an LM358, it's a dual op amp. We're using one out of two of them, as you can see there. You do have to power it though, so positive supply to pin 8, and then uh, pin 4, the uh, negative supply. Sometimes you will not see that on the schematic diagram, but you always have to power it. We only have one voltage that is fixed into place for the most part because the circuit is made for a changing supply voltage. So that's the Zener voltage. When current passes through a reverse bias Zener voltage, which is uh, one of the few diodes you can have pass uh, reverse bias, pass current, you will get its Zener voltage. So I'm using a 5.1 volt Zener diode. That's reverse bias. As long as we're above 5.1 volts at the supply, some amount of current will flow through and it will build up. And uh, we don't need much. 10,000 uh, ohm resistors should work fine. So we have a pretty close to 5.1 volt uh, fix there. It does vary a little bit by how much current is flowing through, but for the most part, it's pretty stable. And now we'll look at the non-inverting input. So when the non-inverting input has a higher voltage than the inverting input, the output is high. So it's probably about 10 and a half volts if, if you have the supply set to uh, 12 volts, it loses a little bit. When it falls below the voltage at the non-inverting input, the output goes low. It connects to ground pretty good. Ground on both sides means the LED will be uh, turned off. So what we do is we want to turn it off at uh, 10 volts. Uh, we just have the supply voltage at uh, 10 volts we turn the dial down till it falls below uh, 5.1 volts and then it will set the output low. And as long as we stop right when it drops to low, we should be set pretty good. Now we do have an additional resistor coming from the output to the non-inverting input. That's a positive feedback resistor because it's going to the non-inverting input and it provides hysteresis. So what that means is that when we're slightly above the 5.1 volts, that sets the output high, and it's a relatively high value resistor, but uh, the output's high, so it pulls that voltage up even more, a, a little bit. So you have to go down an extra amount to drop below that 5.1 volts to set the output low. But when you do, then the output will pull it down even more. So it's pulled down a little bit, so you have to go up an extra amount. What that does is it prevents a uh, 5.1 volt specific point where it kind of wavers up and down, where the output just keeps bouncing around high and low. It uh, locks it into place a little bit better. 
And finally, we're gonna zoom in and uh, take a look at the actual component there. So uh, positive supply to uh, pin eight, and then uh, negative supply to pin four, as we saw before on the op amp. We got the output, that is the top pin to the left, pin one. You can see we got a resistor there and a jumper. Jumper comes down to the load. Uh, doesn't matter the order, as long as the LED's in the proper direction. Long lead the anode towards the output, short lead the cathode. Uh, towards ground 1000 ohm resistor protecting the LED. That's why we're limiting to 12 volts The rest of the circuit can handle more than 12 volts, but uh, that's about the limit for the load right there now we're going to come to the uh, Positive feedback resistor making a Schmidt trigger where it doesn't uh, change the output at an exact voltage It kind of uh, fluctuates a little bit to uh, not make it so easy to change so we have pin 1 going down to pin 3 which is the non-inverting input right there. Uh, pretty straightforward and uh, helping make this uh, voltage more like the output. We have uh, pin three there, jumper going across, a newer jumper than that one, that's why it's wider. This little uh, jumper is just so I can hook an oscilloscope probe to it uh, in the next video. And we got the trim pot, positive on one side, negative on the other, has a resistive element, and you tap a line there, giving you a variable voltage divider. Pretty straightforward. Now. We have uh, the Zener diode and uh, the 10 kilo ohm resistor to limit uh, current through it. And you can see that comes with a positive supply to pin two, there the inverting input, and uh, then the Zener diode. So there's a black band there, that's the cathode, uh, basic uh, diode stuff, anode over there. But since it's a Zener diode, we have the cathode more positive, the anode more negative. It's rated for 5.1 uh, volts. And uh, this is one way you can see what its rating is, just measure the voltage across it when you have a higher voltage. And if you have a higher voltage at the supply and a voltage across the Zener diode, I, that's what I did to make sure this was a 5.1 volt Zener diode. That's how I figured it was. Next uh, video, we're actually gonna use the oscilloscope to look at that video. But it's going to the inverting input. The inputs don't let current in or out, they just look at the voltage. That's another important thing about op amps and comparators. Their uh, inputs just look at the voltage for the most part. A little bit trickles through, but hardly any. So in any case, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see ya in the next video.